Okay, so here's the final one. They have this. You ever get a you ever get a graph book? You ever graph it? No? Alice, you ever get a graph? Okay, cool. So I'll show you guys the graphical representation here in a second. But what this question asks us is that now they're asking us to find all the zeros. So I showed you guys two tests on how to get close to what the zeros were, or at least tell us something about the zeros, but I haven't shown you yet how to determine if it's a zero or not, right? So it says find all the zeros. So far in this course, the only way that we know how to find zeros is either solve for x by inverse operations, quadratic formula, completing the square, or factoring. That's it, right? All we know. Um, and so, and then what I've recently told you is, well, I can't tell you what the, exactly the zeros are, but I can tell you if we're going to have a rational zero, if we're going to have a real rational zero, then I know that it's going to take place of one of these numbers. Right? So I know if I'm going to have a rational zero, a real rational zero, then it's going to be one of these numbers. Remember, these are all factors of my p over q, right? p over q. Does, does everybody kind of agree with me right now with the rational zero test? The rational zero test tells you all the possible rational zeros are going to be in the form of your factors of your p over your q, which is your coefficient of your cube term, of your leading term. So therefore, if I have a I can still have irrational. I can still have complex. But if it's a rational number, it has to be one of these numbers. Does everybody agree with me? OK. Well, I'm telling you this thing. Yeah. So now we need to determine what are the zeros, right? So the reason why I asked two students to graph it is because, ladies and gentlemen, when we're talking about zeros and roots, we know that graphically the zero and the roots, Brian, are the what? The, um, oh, oh. No, OK. They uh, rhyme with the y-intercepts. X-intercepts, right? They're where the graph crosses the x-axis. So what we did, you know, we know that if we can look at a graph and say, oh, the graph crosses the x-axis here, then I automatically know what a zero is. But let's pretend we don't know what zeros are, right? Let's pretend we don't know. We don't have a graphing calculator. So what we can do is we can say, well, if it is rational, it has to be one of these. So let's pretend I want 1 to be a 0. Okay? Let's say I say, I'll, let's pretend 1 is a 0. How can I prove that 1 is a 0? If 1 is a 0, then would we say, if remember 1 is a 0, then we could say x equals 1 and x minus 1 equals 0, right? Yes? Remember how we did this in those problems? We said our 0 equals 1. So you say x equals 1. Then you write it like this. And what that means is this is a fact. Then you could say x minus 1 is a factor, right? Yes? So how can we prove that x minus 1 is a factor? This is what we did at the very beginning of class. How do we prove something is a factor? How do you know 6 is a factor of 12? You have to do what with the 6 into the 12? Divide it, right? So that's where we're coming to. If I want to prove that 1 is a 0, I'm going to have to prove that the factor x minus 1 divides into that polynomial. So notice how, remember, the, somebody asked me earlier, why do we, how'd you get the positive 1? Remember, we go from 0 to factor. If I want to prove my factor is a, goes into it, Ronnie, then I check the 0. So how can I prove this? I'll use synthetic division. So I do 1, which is the 0, and 1, 3, negative 25, 21. So let's use synthetic division and see if this works. So Wendy, first bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. Negative 21 plus 4 is a negative 21. Negative 21 times 1 is negative 21. Does that work? Huh? What do you mean, where? It's not one of your coefficients. Right? Yeah, OK, you were looking before. So is 1 a 0? Yeah. 1 works. What's my remainder? Zero. x squared plus 4x minus 21. 
right? So we know that x minus 1, that's a factor. That times that gives you there. But I want to find out what are all the zeros. Well, can I factor x squared plus 4x minus 21 again? Yeah, Ashley, you're going to want to have the hand on the slate, yeah. So can I factor that again? Yeah, of course. All right. I guess that goes back to my original point that I was explaining to you guys again. So therefore, this gets x plus 7 times x minus 3. So therefore, if you're saying, what are your zeros? You set each one of these equal to 0, where you say x minus 1 equals 0, x plus 7 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. So therefore, your zeros, x equals 1, x equals negative 7, and x equals 3. OK? One? I didn't. I guessed. What you're going to do is, if you don't know what your zeros are, you're going to want to pick your easiest numbers. So you're going to start with 1, negative 1, 2, or 3, negative 3. We're going to do other examples next class period, so we'll do more practice. Right now, we're just kind of ran out of time. Um, but we'll do another example where you don't know. But if Brooke and Alice will look at their calculator, you can easily see if you have a calculator